Let us pray. Father God, we come to you and we come to you we come to you in our burden and our needing your grace. Father, we ask that you would take this word, take the words in the text and just expose them to our lives to the places that we need to hear it. Guide my words, guide my words, make give them power, give them the power to change. Because I can do it, because I can do nothing in and of myself. Father, guide and direct this time. We pray that your spirit would work in a way that it it has never worked before. Send your spirit afresh. Pray for pray for these things in Christ's name. Amen. Have you ever felt just God come fresh and new like he's never done before? Some of us come from come from backgrounds that are a wicked and vile and we were and, and then God just comes in and he just does an amazing work in your life. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever known somebody like that? That is what this text is speaking about today. Let's start off by reading the text in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 12 to 10. We always thank God for you all. I uh, mention you in our prayers. We continually remember, uh, remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you. For your sake, you became imitators of us and of the Lord. In spite of severe suffering, you welcome the message with joy given by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and so you became a model to all the believers in all the believers in a, a, a Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia in Macedonia and Achaia your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell us how you turn from God, turn to God from idols. To serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. As I mentioned, there are times God comes in and he takes a sinner. I mean, he just takes them and he just changes this person anew in ways that we never would have thought of. That is what our text is here talking tonight. And first, Paul is thankful in prayer because God works and continues to work in the lives of the Thessalonians. Paul is thankful because of the work God did in the Thessalonians 
in the lives of the in the lives of the Thessalonians to save them. Read with me in verses four and five. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that He has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. God came to the Thessalonians in a radical way that they would never, ever forget. And it would change their life forever. Words in and of themselves have no power. They are worthless. But when God, it takes God to take the words to cause change in the lives of people. with the Holy Spirit to produce a, a conviction in the lives of the, of the Thessalonians. God didn't just do that to them, but He does it for us here today. If you are a Christian, you know that the conviction that God brought to you in, in uh, that God brought in your life at salvation and still brings in your Christian life. Paul is thankful because he knows that this faith that God worked in in the Thessalonians and by extension us here today. God God continued to work this faith in the lives of every true believer by giving them the ability to generate quality that they could not generate on their own power. What were the qualities that God generated in the lives of the Thessalonians? God, God produced love, endurance, and hope. Look with me in verses 2 and 3. We always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continue to remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor, labor prompted by love, your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. God just doesn't work in us to, merely to save us, but He also generates us qualities that bear the fruit of our salvation. Paul is thankful because God demonstrated in, in himself, because God demonstrates in Paul and in the, in the Thessalonians of the quality that producing faith. And these were three things. Three things that they produced. Three things that salvation have produced. That uh, uh, you have produced in Paul, uh, you have produced in the Thessalonians, and in us here today. First, their work produced by faith. Their works were motivated by faith. Faith. Some of us are working so hard and we are getting drained. Our limbs are weak, and we don't, and we don't understand. We're doing what we should, whether it is school, work, or ministry. We are all drained because we don't, because we try to do it in our own power. We don't depend on God for everything. Maybe the reason you are so drained is because you are trying to do what God has called you to do in your own strength and power. Second, labor prompted by love. 
God produced labor for the purpose of love. What is the difference between work and labor? Aren't they the same? Not exactly. Work is the regular task that you do. Labor is that really difficult thing. But sometimes work can be labor. But they aren't necessarily the same all the time. The same word is used in, in, in chapter 2, verse 9, to describe how Paul worked and was not wanting to be a burden. Are you experiencing some difficult task in your life? Maybe a co-worker that seems to always give you a problem. Even worse, a boss that is always hassling you. He constantly points out your failures. Praying that God will give you the ability to love the most difficult people in your life. While you are experiencing your difficult circumstances, maybe God might be deliberately there so can you can be a light that they would not ever see. You might be the one that leads them to Christ through your love. Third, endurance inspired by hope. We need endurance in our difficult circumstances, don't we? Sometimes we struggle in our difficult circumstances because we've lost hope that God can change it. Maybe we need to say, maybe you need to say with me, God, give me hope again in my difficult circumstances and in every circumstance. My faith seems to have wavered. Because God works in us through faith in Jesus Christ, we can trust God. He will use our faith to change the world. Sometimes we are called to trust in the most difficult circumstances and hope that he will bring about the change that needs to happen. I know this feeling. I, I, have, I have experienced it virtually all my life. When I was about 12 years old, that I started to have a severe uh, speech impediment that still happens to this day from time to time. Yet when I was a Christian, after I was a Christian for a year, I felt the call of God on my life. Two things were at odds. How would God call somebody who could not even speak a tangible word to his people. I had a crisis of faith. Throughout the years, I have learned to trust God in my difficult circumstances, to believe even when there's no reason to believe. And God has shown me time after time that he is working with my voice and he is working so I can communicate his word to his people. How can we do the work, the labor of love, the endurance inspired by hope in Jesus Christ? What needs to happen for us to be able to do this huge work? What is needed? We need faith. Faith must be modeled. Since God is working in people's lives to produce the work of faith, labor of love, and endurance inspired God, I hope God calls believers to model faith for other believers and to model it for unbelievers. 
so that believers in particular can live out their faith and have the faith that changes the world. Faith must be modeled. Look with me in verse 5. You know how we lived among you for your sake. Paul is deliberately dismissing his own work and highlighting what the Thessalonians did. Because what they were able to accomplish was because God was at work in them. He is reminding them of what kind of men they were. Just as God came not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. God used Paul, Silas, and Timothy to demonstrate what faith in Christ looked like. What did Paul do to demonstrate a faith that would start? from Thessalonica and work itself to the outer regions. Uh, look with me, because we first see this story in Acts chapter 17. When they had passed through, when they had passed through, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish, where there was a Jewish syn a synagogue, and his custom was, Paul went to the synagogues, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I am pre proclaiming to you is the Christ. He said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas and did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and not a few of prominent uh, women. But the Jews were starting a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other brothers before the city officials and shouting, These men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here. And Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decree, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and others post bond and let them go. So you see... It's all about the money. So Paul was modeling Christ for the Thessalonians. What did Paul's example do for for the Thessalonians? Paul's example allowed the Thessalonians to receive the word. Since God was working faith in them and using Paul, Silas, and Timothy to model what it is like to suffer with joy, that's a the Thessalonians could live out their newfound faith and and be a model for other believers. Look with me in verse 6 and 7. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. In, in spite of severe suffering, you welcome the message with joy given by the Holy Spirit. And and so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. We see here that Paul modeled faith for the Thessalonians. There are people in your life that God has placed there so that you can show them Jesus. You are the only one that can show Jesus in a way that they understand. This may mean for you to make severe uh, sacrifices. Maybe this may mean that God not only comes in power, but in order for people to change the world, God calls us to model Christ for someone else. 
So they can be an example too. God may be telling you right now to do something you really don't want to do. He may be calling you to take less overtime if you have if you have that opportunity. He may be asking you to spend less time watching TV or if you're anything like me to cut back on the extra things that you do so you can invest in someone else. There may be a young boy or woman that needs a mentor. There are young boys and young girls who come to the camp on a one a night. They need someone to model faith in, in a way that makes sense to them. There may be a young couple that you can mentor and share your decades of met uh, uh, marriage experience and help them to avoid the pitfalls that then they may lead to divorce or adultery. There may be someone you see gifts in, he or she may need help to cultivate those gifts. You may realize that you need to be discipled. You need someone to pour into you, so you try to find somebody. Uh, the third point. A faith that changes the world is a faith that God works in us so we can turn to God and separate us from idols. The reason the Thessalonians were able to turn to God and separate themselves from idols is because the focus of their worship has changed. As Ayubna Ted Tripp says, who Ayubna wrote the book, A.I. Ayubna Shepherding a Child's Heart, we are all, all human beings, are worshipers. It's just a matter of who and what you worship. Read with me verse in verses 9 and 10. The, they, they tell of how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. The Thessalonians were able to turn to God and separate themselves from idols because they determined to serve the living God. They realized that those I idols were false gods and they wanted to learn to serve the true and living gods. The true, the true and living God. We are made to worship. We either worship God or, or idols. The faith that God works in us is a faith that demonstrates true Christ-like qualities, and these qualities expose our idols so that we can separate ourselves from them. We either worship God or we worship idols. In, in the midst of us seeking to be Christ-like, God is showing us our idols every day. When God when God saves us, he shows you some of the idols that get in your way in having Jesus as Lord of your life, and you must separate yourselves from those. But it doesn't stop at salvation. God continually, to do, continually does that. God continues to show you what your idols are. Just because you're a Christian does not mean idols are absent. They are disguised. We often rationalize our idol worship. God worked it. Idols come in all shapes and sizes. They aren't just the little things that you have or or the big things, but they often come in a variety of shapes and sizes. If you're like me, you want to know how do you detect the idol that lives inside you. How do you detect the idol? Here are, here are some questions to kind of probe of to what your idols might be. 
A idol typically lies in what you worry about the most. A idol typically lies in answering this question. If I failed or lost it, would that cause me to feel that I didn't want to live anymore? A idol typically lies on the things that we take comfort in or when things get bad. Idol typically lies in the things you cope in. What are your release valves? What do you do to feel better? What preoccupies you? What do you daydream about? What makes me feel more the most self-worth? What am I the proudest of? What do I want to be known for? What do I lead with my conversations? What do I want to make sure that the people know about me? What do I want to know? What prayer unanswered would make me seriously think about turning from God. What do I really want and expect out of my life? What makes me happy? What is my hope for the future? These are surface idols. These are just idols on the surface and there are source idols, things that cause the surface idols to reveal. Putting he also see this in the text. What caused our surface out? Because we stopped serving God. And we start serving idols. For the Thessalonians and for us, serving God means an ongoing effort to serve the true God and separate ourselves from the idols that exist. The second reason, the Thessalonians were able to turn to God and separate themselves from idols is that they waited on Christ's coming. Because the Thessalonians had a proper understanding and, and motivation to serve God, this allowed them to separate themselves from their idols. We also need this motivation if we're going to ever separate ourselves from, the, from our I, I, idols. We must constantly look at things we love and see why, why do we love them. When we understand why we love to do them, we can often see the source idol thriving, driving the surface idol. Let's look at anger. Something we all struggle with to varying degrees. And you can put in, instead of anger, lust. You can put in anything you want. But right now I just want to pinpoint anger. Anger is not just a sin but an idol that we must separate ourselves from. Why is anger a idol? Because there is a deeper issue on why we get angry so often. The reason is because we want to be in control. We want to be in control because we want to dictate events and people around us. We manipulate people and events so we can be in control. We want to be sovereign. We have fit people and events so that people will worship and serve us rather than serving God. The reason we get angry when things do not go our way because it exposes the true reality that we are not in control. We are not God, but we have done everything so people would worship us. When we understand why they waited on God, it allows us to reposition ourselves so we can remove our idols. The text shows us two reasons why they waited on Jesus. First, they believed that Jesus rose from the dead. Second, that Jesus will deliver us from the wrath to come. How do these two things allow us to see things more clearly? Let's look at anger again. 
The same power that rose Jesus from the dead allows me to overcome my sin. I can actually, actually separate myself from my idols because God is working in me to do so. Knowing that God will deliver me from the wrath to come, God is going to pour his wrath on anything that takes away from worship due to him. God is going to pour his wrath knowing that God will pour his wrath on the sin and the things that cause sin allows me to see that the idol I worship is something battling for my affection and love toward Christ a faith that changes the world is a faith that is idol shattering for us to shatter our idols we must understand how we must reposition our motivation and our action to separate ourselves from idols. We see this in the text and we must refocus to serving God and wait for, Je for Jesus is coming. Some of you are struggling with idols in your life that you cannot get rid of. It could be power, acceptance, money, or position. You could realize and hold on, you could realize the hold an idol can have on you and realize that the only way you're going to be released are, are going to go from an unwilling slave to an idol to a willful slave for Christ if God opens your prison jail himself men in our church are struggling with pornography men are not the only ones who are struggling with it now scores of women are women are being are shown to be in bondage to pornography as well. We need to remind ourselves that these are vain idols. We need to come to Jesus and ask Him to give you the strength to overcome what you cannot overcome in and of yourself. The road will be long, but God will give you the power to overcome this sin. He will remind you that when he comes, he will deliver you until God fully and finally delivers us from the wrath to come. We need to keep asking and leaning on God and Christ to deliver us from every sin that entangles and pursues Christ and stops us from pursuing Christ with all our heart. God will use you in extraordinary ways maybe in maybe in unexpected ways God started a work in you and will continue to work in, in you in ways that can change the world it may be an unexpected way if I were to ask you who was the most influential person in the New Testament besides Jesus you who would say Probably Peter, John, maybe Paul. There, 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 uh, there is a guy that changed the world. He might not have brought thousands to Christ, but he focused on one person at a time. Through God working through him, he was able to change thousands, if not millions of lives changed. God did imaginable things through him. His name is Barnabas. He stepped up for Paul in Acts 9.26. He stepped up again for John Mark in Acts 15.36-41. Paul wanted to get rid of Mark. In fact, Barnabas had such a dramatic impact on Mark that Paul could... could could say, bring Mark, for he is useful for my ministry. 2 Timothy 4.11 Someone who, who was worthless to Paul now was very useful for ministry. God may not be using directly to change thousands, but he will use us in various ways. It, 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 in various ways, uh, yeah, because I'm not indirectly to change the world.